In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Stellarium to measure the length of day, the time from sunrise to sunset, at any location on the planet, and at any date. Though we'll focus in on the solstices and the equinoxes. So let me share my screen. Okay, here we are in Stellarium, and since we're measuring the time from sunrise to sunset, we're clearly going to be looking at the sun, so you can set that first. Come over here to the left, and we want the search window, F3. Click on that and just type in sun, enter, and it will center you up on the sun. Next thing, we're going to pick our location, and uh, the first, you'll encounter this in the lab, we do a practice run using Chapel Hill, North Carolina. That's the headquarters for the Skynet Robotic Telescope Network. So you come over here to the location window. And I'm not gonna do Chapel Hill since you're gonna do that one in the lab and then you're gonna do many more of your own choosing. I'll pick a different city. Maybe I'll pick uh, the great city of Chicago where I went to graduate school, right there. So you just type it in and click it and change its location. Now, one thing you'll want to do is, in this lab, different from lab one, make sure that the custom time zone is turned off and daylight saving time is turned on. And by turning the custom time zone off and turning daylight savings time on, then you're basically just accepting local time for whatever place you pick. And so you can see it changed the time zone to match that of Chicago. Okay. Now we pick the location, so now we're gonna pick the date, and that's the one that looks like a clock here. And uh, in the first example you do with Chapel Hill, you do it for the summer solstice, so let's also do this one for the summer solstice. And the summer solstice begins on June 21st. Sometimes it may be June 20th or June 22nd, but um, June 21st typically, that's close enough, so we'll set it to that. And we want the sunrise and the sunset. Let's do sunrise first. So I'm gonna decrease the time. You can see the sun approaching the horizon there. And then uh, I can switch over to minutes. We're running backwards in time. So sunrise would be somewhere around here, but you're gonna wanna do it a little bit more precisely. Now, it's a little tricky to do because you can see as the sun sets, we don't really see it anymore. We just get this big glow in Stellarium. So one trick, what I like to do, is I back it off the horizon by running time forward in this case, and I just put my finger on the sun. I'm touching my computer screen. Now if you have a, a touch uh, screen, you may have to just hover slightly above it, but uh, I don't, so I'm just touching the screen, uh, covering it with filthy fingerprints, and now I'm decreasing the time and I can't see the sun anymore. And of course, you can't see my finger. You have to just have to imagine it. But I'm moving it to where my finger is half above and half below the horizon. And since it's on the sun, that means the sun is half above and half below the horizon. And now, what do I mean by horizon? Because here we have you know, buildings and trees and mountain ranges in the distance. And we're not looking for the treetops. There's this natural horizon right you know, at the base of the trees, that's kind of where you want the sun to be half above and half below. So I got kind of close, but you could do a lot better if you zoom in. So I just zoomed in here. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse, but you can also use page up and page down to scroll in and out in Stellarium. And you can see I'm actually off. It needs to be a little bit lower. So I'm going to do the same trick. I'm putting my finger on the sun and I'm backing it down to right about there. My finger is right here, so the sun is half above and half below the horizon. And that means that sunrise is at 518 on the summer solstice in Chicago. Now, I should say there are other ways you can do this. Uh, if you poke around in Stellarium, you can change the landscape. Uh, this is a, a farm landscape. You can change it to ocean. And of course, there are no obstructions on the horizon if you select ocean but I actually don't want you to do that. The goal here isn't to get the most accurate measurement. The goal is to have a realistic experience, as if you were out in a field trying to do this measurement yourself. 
So the, the trees, the obstructions, it's a source of error. It's something you have to navigate around, do the best you can, but it's also something you can talk about in your sources of error. And the auto grading in WebAssign is fairly generous. So um, it's okay if it's a little bit difficult to do. Uh, the auto grading is not gonna penalize you for it. Now that's the sunrise time. And again, five hours, 18 minutes. In the lab, you're gonna have to put that in decimal hours, which means take those 18 minutes and divide by 60, and then add that to five. Now that's sunrise, so let's go do sunset. Moving forward in time, whoop, there we go. Let me zoom out a little bit. So we're gonna have a lot of obstructions on this horizon. Yep, again, do the trick with my finger. I'm getting, you see we have a mountain and buildings and everything. Again, somewhere around uh, 20 hours and 16 minutes. I'm gonna zoom in here, back it out and do it again. Yeah, this is a big obstruction. I'm waiting till I can see the sun really well to get my finger in there. Okay, there we go, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Oh, you can even see sunspots if you zoom in enough, that's kind of cool. Okay, finger on the sun and moving forward in time. You can see it through the trees there. Again, we don't want the mountain top or any of that. We want kind of the natural horizon somewhere around there. Maybe 20 hours and 18 minutes. So that's 818. So take the 18 minutes, divide by 60, add that to 20. And there you have the decimal hours on a 24 hour clock. And then subtract the sunrise time from the sunset time and you have the length of day. Okay, that's it for this video.